Thank you, last Ken Corla. Um, I have nine minutes, last Ken Corla, is that correct? Thank you. Minister, uh, we're, today we're discussing the decommissioning and removal of the Kinsale Alpha platform. It's a relic of a time when we drilled holes in the ground to suck out gas and oil to burn. We took so much of these fossil fuels from the ground and burned them over so many decades, so much so that we've destroyed our environment and destabilised our climate. Back in the 70s, when we sought our oil and gas fields, we didn't know of the damage. It was a different era, with far less consideration of our environment and limited knowledge on, on emissions and carbon dioxide and how it could overheat our planet. Cheap and abundant energy was our primary concern back then. Today, we know so much more. We know that we can no longer continue to extract and burn fossil fuels. We know that across this country and across all parties, there is a desire to address climate change. We know that in some parties, there is a willingness to act and not just talk about it. Last week, we saw one of the most significant announcements ever in the battle to reduce fossil fuel use and emissions. Minister Eamon Ryan and our partners in government agreed that no more new oil or gas exploration license will be granted. This is a huge step by this government. Previous administrations admitted that Ireland's action on climate change was insufficient, that we were laggards on climate change. I remember the quote well. With the Green Party in government, the ban on new licences, no LNG or fracked gas imports, and a commitment to reduce our emissions in line with the science has put us on the world stage as leaders on climate change now. We will, of course, depend on the marine environment to provide our future energy needs as we wean ourselves off our fossil fuel dependency. We look to a decade of development of offshore renewable wind energy. Our aim is to achieve five gigawatts in the Irish and Celtic Sea over that time, followed closely with 30 gigawatts of floating offshore development as that technology improves. This harnessing of our really, really strong wind potential is to provide <coughs> clean green energy and energy resilience thousands and thousands of new jobs across the entire supply chain of offshore renewables over the next decades. Surety of supply through interconnectors and no longer reliant on being on the end of a pipe and a six billion euro fossil fuel import bill. There will be large community funds derived from these developments that will, build, that will benefit communities across the entire country. And we can be leaders. We can be leaders on renewables as well as leaders on climate action. We can be leaders on renewable energy. These developments, however, they can and they will have environmental impacts. The construction, the operation, the maintenance and the eventual decommission and removal of wind turbines, cables and substations, just like Kinsale that we're talking about today, needs careful monitoring. We need to ensure that we have the highest level of scientifically based environmental assessments of proposed construction. The life expectancy of an offshore, uh, uh, offshore wind turbine, it's about 30 years. It's a very harsh environment. After about 25 or 30 years, they have to be repowered. And those works, that ongoing maintenance and that repowering, um, the maintenance on the underwater cables and the substations, that's all going to need maintenance and upgrades during the life expectancy. And all of this must be done in a manner, in a manner which puts the preservation and protection of the marine environment to the fore. That has to be our number one priority here. Energy resilience, our coastal communities, but protection of our marine environments has to be to the fore. The marine environment, it's an environment that we depend on for climate balance. And that's not discussed very often, but we really, really are dependent as a planet on a healthy ocean and a healthy marine environment to balance our climate needs. Leaving the cables, and remnants of these developments behind in the sea when these installations, when these, when these turbines become life expired, that shouldn't become the norm. We should build that into the planning process and we should look at how we're going to monitor and manage that into the future. I'm delighted to see that your department has produced our plan to designate marine protected areas. I'm particularly glad to see it, by, uh, see it led by my colleague, Minister Noonan. We need to ensure that the, the designation of marine protected areas, it doesn't lag the consenting for offshore renewable development and these processes must work in tandem. We need to protect but we need to develop and those things should work in tandem. Our joint Oireachtas committee just yesterday completed our pre-legislative scrutiny report on the Marine Planning and Management Development Bill and will produce that report next week. 
And just for Deputy McLaughlin's uh, benefit and, and for the questions he raised, we do recommend that aquaculture is considered in this bill or in other methods of, of marine planning that will be developed through the, marine, um, the national marine planning framework. Um, consideration for public consultation was always raised. I can tell, I'm glad to, to, to tell the House that we considered that at length in the committee. And I want to thank all the cross-party uh, agreement that we had in that committee, that we put marine protection, public consultation, really to the forefront of our recommendations in, in that report that, that will be coming shortly. This bill is essential for the, it, it, it's essentially the planning act for the sea. And with the marine protected area legislation, it'll be the framework for marine protection and development for the future. And if we get this right, Minister, and I do believe this government will get this right, um, and that this government has the commitment and support to get this right, I would foresee a future minister standing here before this House in 50 or 60 years' time when we talk about decommissioning wind turbines will not be looking at the same issue as we're looking for the Kinsale gas field today. And that minister, I would hope, will be able to acknowledge that a government with foresight and acting with knowledge on how to reverse climate chaos stopped further drilling for gas and oil and gave us carbon neutrality, which we will do, Minister, and I believe we have a commitment to do that and we will deliver on that. And by then, the Kinsale gas field will truly be an ancient relic and a reminder of a time when we came close to destroying our planet. Thank you, Minister.